one night I wake up and I was thirsty. I went to get a glass of water, maybe midnight or so. Um, and I went back to bed and just while I was waiting to, thinking nothing, waiting to go back to sleep, all of a sudden from my chest, you know, this energy comes out. You know, when I say energy, it's not a thought. It's energy, physical energy, something, you know, something energetic, like, uh, you know, like a physical sensation, not a mental thought or physical thing coming out with an incredible power, but it was love. And my consciousness was in this energy. And it was also joy, and it was also peace. All together. <laughs> How is that possible? You know, I was like stunned, right? And it was white light, white scintillating light. And my body was hot, you know, and, and also they, they, they were like, they was, it was scintillating in the sense that almost my cell were, were going with the, with the scintillation of the light, you know, it was a little, almost like my body was in synchrony with what was going on. It was hot and vibrating, you know, and, and I never felt that sensation before. And, and my consciousness is in this light. So I am this light. Then this light <laughs> expands and covers all the, all the, fills all the space, visible space. And, and my consciousness is in this consciousness. So now I am out of myself. I, I am observing myself with the consciousness which is inside and outside. So, I mean, talk about stunning. And then a thought forms, and the thought is, and it was like, oh, right? Wow, this is the stuff of which everything is made. And I meant the universe is made of this stuff that feels like love, joy, and peace. And by the way, peace I never felt before in my life, because peace was the sense of me. I am this, and now finally I know who I am. I'm this. So um, you're home, right? It's the sense of being home. Wow, that's me. Wow, that, but this me also out there. Woo! <laughs> you understand? This is, you know, and that, and that was it. You know, that, then the, you know, then was back to normal. And uh, you can imagine that normal could not have been ever the normal of before, right? Because, because once you have such an experience, where I thought that I was separate from the universe, separate from the objects, separate from everything. And now I realize that I am what the objects are made of. <laughs> well, you know, all of a sudden, you, what, what, what are you, you know, this is, a, this is a, you know, in 180 degrees position in terms of an experience that tells you, because that experience had the power of truth that I never had before, because the power of truth is you know that what you see, you know, you know that this thing, you know, you touch is there, you know, it exists, right? That sense, that must be it, which is in fact what even science relies, they rely on an experiment where you see something that is predicted by theory, then that proves the theory, then you think, you know, then you know that even your mental uh, prediction, mental theory, mathematical theory, is you know maybe correct or is correct. So for me, I, that sense of truth was stronger than the sense of truth that you get from a the, showing a theoretical you know doing a proof of a theory of a theorem in, in, in mathematics. That was the highest truth that I knew before. Is you know a, a, a logical proof of a of a theorem, for example. That's the only thing that I could say, yeah, that's true because, you know, blah, blah, blah. But here, the truth was different. It was not a yes or no. The truth was a sense that it has to be that way without knowing how it is. So it is the answer to the why without the answer of the how. Exactly the opposite of science. Because science only tells you the how, it would never tell you the why. <laughs> So, so it was kind of interesting, right? So anyway, so that, you know, uh, it, you know is obvious now, changed my life. And, and so uh, I started uh, trying to figure out, you know, ways to experience my consciousness. And, and you know, I went through all, all kinds of schools, read all kinds of books, 
But fundamentally, the only reliable knowledge that I got through this process, it lasted about 20 years, so from 1990 around you know, to 2008, 2009, when I decided to change my career, uh, was, uh, uh, you know, was, was experiential. In other words, in, through this process, I had many, many other extraordinary experiences of consciousness. They gave me other aspects of consciousness and our, our deeper reality that you cannot get by reading books because the books give you symbols, but the symbols are not experience. The, the symbols of the books become experience if you have something close in your experience to what they're telling you. But if you don't have a close, an experience close to what the books are telling you, they're useless <laughs> because they can only, you know, they can only, they only, the only symbols only point to the knowledge, but they don't, they can give you knowledge if you're not ready to get it <laughs> or if you already have it or something close to what you, you know, the symbols can help you get deeper, but no more than that. So, so after about 20 years, I then uh, I arrived to the conclusion that consciousness and free will, because free will is inherent in consciousness, it, it must be there because consciousness without free will doesn't make any sense. What do you do knowing something, but you cannot do anything about it, what you know is meaningless. So free will must exist. It was obvious. On the other hand, free will could not exist without consciousness. So consciousness without free will may exist, but is useless. Free will can only exist if there is consciousness, because only consciousness can tell you what you want and where you want to go. So free will allows you to go where consciousness would like to go. So free will without consciousness cannot exist. Free, because it's exactly what science is saying. Free will doesn't exist because they don't believe that consciousness is a real phenomenon. They think that it is an epiphenomenon. You see? But if a consciousness exists, then what they call randomness is actually free will. Because it's the randomness look from, you, from the outside, it looks like randomness because there is no law. If there is free will, it cannot be algorithmic. There cannot be any law that determines where things should go. So from the outside, it looks like pure randomness, which is exactly what happens in quantum physics. What they call the collapse of the wave function is a purely random phenomenon, which they have never been able to explain, to rationalize. Why? Because they think that consciousness doesn't exist. They think that consciousness is a property of the brain. Well, no, I'm saying the consciousness is a property of the quantum fields, which are the basis, at the, at the foundation of reality. And therefore, if the quantum fields are conscious, then the collapse of the wave function is a free will decision of the field that is conscious. The field that you observe, not the observer, not the consciousness of the observer. There is a theory of quantum physics that says, that the conscious of the observer is the one that collapses the wave function. No, it doesn't make any sense. It is the conscience of the observe that decides what to do, what to show you. Okay? <laughs> very, very important. <laughs> But I, st I stop here because otherwise I keep on going. And, no, no, don't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I could listen to you. I could listen. <laughs> hey there, Inspired Evolutionary. If you absolutely love this, well, then here's a full conversation with this guest on the Inspired Evolution podcast. Check it out now.